I'm Matt Willis, Public Health Officer for Marin County, with an update for January 26th. One common question we're hearing is when will COVID-19 shift from pandemic to endemic? I'd like to explain how we're approaching this question in Marin. To our epidemiologists, definitions matter. So let's start by defining endemic. Endemic is defined as an expected or normal ongoing occurrence of a disease in a given area or population. That's in contrast to the word epidemic, which is a rapid increase in rates of a given disease above what's expected in a given population. A pandemic is just where those higher than expected rates are hitting everywhere in the world, basically a global epidemic. So the definition of endemic ties to what's normal or expected. With an endemic illness, the levels you see are predicted and the disease is understood as being part of the conditions of our communities and our lives. In that sense, we're slowly heading towards an endemic relationship with SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID-19. However, and I think this is why the vocabulary matters, here's what endemic does not mean. It does not mean that the disease is rare or mild or is always happening at a constant level. As an example, let's look at two other endemic viruses. According to the CDC, influenza causes 10 to 40 million symptomatic illnesses annually and 30 to 50,000 deaths in the US, depending on the severity of the flu season. A virus called respiratory syncytial virus, or RSV, is the most common cause of pneumonia in young kids. 50,000 hospitalizations and around 400 deaths among children under age five annually. And for those over age 65, RSV causes about 150,000 annual hospitalizations and 15,000 deaths. Both are endemic viruses where cases rise and become common and then fall periodically. Both can cause serious illness and death and are vaccine preventable. When we talk about COVID-19 being endemic, it doesn't mean mild or low impact, but it would mean viewing it as part of a family of familiar respiratory viruses that are out there and that we've lived with for a long time. As COVID begins to lose its specialness, hopefully we lose some of the fear and dread we've developed when every case was cause for alarm. This is part of the tension we'll be holding as we pivot our approach. It means living with a new virus that we know causes hospitalizations and deaths. It's just worth noting that that is not a new dynamic, and we've been living with endemic viruses for a long time. In fact, the things we do to protect ourselves from COVID have limited the spread of these other viruses significantly. We're having another mild flu season in Marin. So practices like better hand washing, more home-based testing, selective face covering in certain settings may stay with us. I think it's likely that we will experience additional variants of COVID-19 or SARS-CoV-2 in 2022, because that's the nature of the virus. And these will cause new rises and falls in cases. We've learned we need to be humble in our predictions. Regarding shifting to endemic, I don't think we should get too caught up in the vocabulary. What it matters, what we call it matters a lot less than how we respond. We're fortunate to be part of a community that has high levels of immunity and has the tools and agility to react to whatever the virus brings. We'll continue to respond with layered strategies using the tools we've learned are effective with monitoring systems, vaccinations, face covering when it's needed, and with new treatments that prevent the most serious outcomes. We'll respond with a balanced approach that doesn't seek to prevent or even count every case, but focuses on preventing hospitalizations and deaths, and will follow the best science, knowing that it continues to evolve. And whatever we call it, endemic or pandemic, we'll respond as a community, as we always have, knowing that we're mutually dependent on one another to limit spread. Thank you for doing your part.